then you, you, you move on to EA Sports. Uh, you hook in with the uh, Vancouver team up there. You're working on FIFA, some of their projects. Um, sort of moving more to, to now, I'm sort of curious. You know, in recent years, every EA Sports game, every EA game, has moved over to Frostbite technology. So I'm curious, you know, that's got to be a decision that goes pretty high up, quite probably to you, mm -hmm. where you've got these successful, uh, cohesive teams that are, they have their routine, <laughs> making the sports analogy again. And um, was that a tough decision to say, hey, we, we want to get everybody on Frostbite? Was it, was it a difficult adjustment? for those teams to do that? You know, this this kind of went back to the point where Andrew Wilson, so, you know, Patrick Soderlin used to run our, what we used to be called the games label, and Andrew Wilson ran the sports label. Yeah. We kind of had two factions in the company. And, um, and I think by that point, we had realized that consolidating on common engines and the, the, the benefits that come from that and having teams contribute and build kind of, uh, you know, the rising tide lifting all boats. Sure. Um, and at that point, we, we had the Frostbite engine that was fueling most of the games and the games label, and then we had a collection of technology on the sports side, um, which we kind of commonized and brought together within sports and called Ignite. Mm -hmm. And when Andrew became CEO and we unified all of Worldwide Studios, we sat down and, and we talked about where the long-term benefits would come of having one common engine. Um, and it wasn't just about making game development better and improving the quality of our games and the efficiency of what we can build, but it was also to allow us to build for the future so we could build like our data uh, platforms and our um, kind of the network that links together all of our social features right. um, and all of our kind of online and network code that would fuel kind of our online experiences and having big, large, shared common teams that would invest in those things and invest in security and 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 everything that goes along with that, and our anal analytics system, um, and that and our our analytics systems, um, and uh, it uh, you know it 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 was something that we saw was going to be a great benefit to us. We decided to do it. We started with FIFA, um, and FIFA was. Well, you start with the most successful yes. game in the entire yes. portfolio. Um, the reason we started with FIFA was for a, a variety of things. One, uh, FIFA is also our largest team. Um, they're probably our most experienced team. Yeah. Um, it's also a team that uh, had done the most work down the route of their PC uh, architecture, um, which actually made it the most natural fit to, to get to Frostbite the transition. First. Yeah. Um, and then we worked on Madden. We were at Madden over last year. Um, and uh, another heavy lift. Uh, but it's something we do over multiple years. So we, yeah. we started with a group of people, you know, three years earlier doing the initial port. And then right. in year two, they'd, it's a heavier lift. And then by year three, we switch everyone over and spend an entire cycle on the new engine. Um, and yeah, so we're, and now we're, we're chipping away at, at our other EA Sports games with the goal of getting you know, all of our titles over at Frostbite in the next few years. So it's almost, to stick with the sports analogy, it's almost sort of an on-the-fly rebuild of, of these franchises yes. that you're, from, from at least a core technology perspective. It, it, it requires us to use advanced teams, yeah. um, which is a construct that we've used in sports for many years, where we have a team that's building this year's game, right. but we also have people that are working on technologies and, and innovations for the future at the same time. Yeah, I remember when yeah. the, the 360 was coming out, and you guys, I think, either a launch title or a couple months right after, like NBA Live came out for, for 360, and it was clearly brand like yeah. all brand new when there yeah. was still you know and you had the the PS2 original Xbox yeah. release as well. So we've yeah, seen we we that have to before. do that. We have to use the kind of that that advanced team methodology. Um, otherwise, it's it's really difficult to build big disruptive uh, things, especially right. that require new technology. I mean, it's I think I think something that I try to mention this from time to time because I I've t I talked to some sports developers here and there, and I I feel like sports game developers have what may be one of the hardest jobs in the games industry in that they effectively have, between pre-production and the, the sort of the testing certification process, is it fair to say that the cycle is really about nine months? Is yeah, for, I mean... Per, I, per, you know, between, release, between the major annual releases, obviously they're updating content all yes. year long, but is that, that's about yeah. what it is, right? We, we try to have our creative... Um, in a really good place for the following year going into the summer. So prior to launching Madden, the next 
you know, few weeks here. Um, we have a pretty good idea of what we're building for Madden next year. Yeah. Um, but we leave some room within kind of that capacity and schedule based on the response that we get sure. from fans of the current game. Um, we also have a kind of good idea of where we're going long range with each franchise. So we have to, in these annual franchises, you have to put a premium on long range planning for our creative. So we have to look at you know, where, where our consumers are going in the gaming industry, what, what experiences they want, um, what kind of our insights are telling us uh, from all the research we do. And we kind of set like kind of a North Star for each one of our franchises where we want to go in the next few years. So is it like literally a, like a, in a job interview? Like is it a five-year plan? Well, or is it, is it that like, far out? I would say it's more like a, a three-year three year, yeah. plan, but it's not exactly three. It's about where are you going in the next few years. Sure, yeah. And we're always kind of coming back to that. And we're always um, kind of reaffirming the direction we're going and making sure that it's the right direction because things change in our industry constantly. And it's not just for us. It's not just about the way that gamers are playing games. It's the way that, that sports fans are cons consuming sports content. I mean, I watch, I, my, I have a 10-year-old son who's about, about, about to turn 11 and he is a diehard fan of the NBA and the NFL and, and, um, and he follows you know, the world of soccer as well. And I watch the way he consumes sports and him and all of his friends there, you know, the, the world has changed from a place where you or I might follow a, a particular team um, all season long and sit down and watch a three hour game um, in one sitting. Yeah. And it's, it's gone from teams to players and stars to following highlights and to consuming sports on multiple screens all the time. Sure. Um, when James Harden did that, that filthy crossover step back last year and, you know, crossed over the defender onto the ground and he stood there for a few seconds and then dropped that, <laughs> that so three. Um, I mean, that moment went viral within, within five minutes, millions of people had seen that highlight all over the world. Yeah. And so we have to recognize that people consume sports and sports content much differently today than they, than they ever did in the past. And so they're going to want gaming experiences that reflect that as well. I guess maybe uh, like a, a, the opposite side of that example is like a couple of years ago, daily fantasy sports was like the <laughs> yeah. biggest thing yes. on the planet, yes. Yes. and now it's if seemingly like gone. Yeah. Like their their merger f attempt failed, and you know, so is that the yeah. kind of thing where you you might be looking at like, oh, okay, this is huge. How do we look at integrating this and making it fun I mean, in a, in a video game sense, and then. And then you know, a, a year or two later, you're like, oh, okay, no, that's that's over. We can we can let's shift our priority to something else. You know, I think it's I think it's um, it are, that's it's an example. I, yeah, but that's I think all I'm it's saying. more, um, you know, things like fantasy scoring are interesting, and and you know, you, you're gonna see something in our our latest Madden Mobile launch uh, coming on August fifteenth called Madden Overdrive. That'll have already happened by the time uh, this airs. Oh, so. Okay, all right. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> um, well, you'll see in, you know, in Madden, Madden Overdrive, we just launched in the mobile space where we created this great PvP experience that uses fantasy scoring rather than touchdowns and field goals. Yeah. It's all fantasy scoring for runs and catches and all that stuff, tapping into the kind of that love of that moment-to-moment -moment gameplay in fantasy sports. But it's also in the way that uh, people are fascinated with um, following real-world sports both on and off the field. So you're seeing it's about the culture and lifestyle. It's following your stars, yeah. not just what they did last night on the court, but what they're doing today in the media and in social media and how um, players are living the lifestyle within the sport. And people are fascinated by it. And they consume just as much of that content as what actually happens on the field. Right. And so it's creating experience, whether it's our career modes or our story modes or creating gaming experiences yeah. that are both, you know, on the streets and in, in on the court in the NBA. Yeah, the, I, mean, the, I read in the news yesterday about James Harden and his and his debut at the Drew League, um, right. which is in a high school gym <laughs> in Los Angeles. Um, and that's just the way the world of sports has gone. So our games in EA Sports are evolving to create much broader experiences now. Um, yeah, I feel like I I was at EA recently playing uh, the one mode yes. in, in live, and I feel like yeah. that's that's hearing you say that, like, yeah. oh, the one mode makes a lot of sense yes. now after hearing you sort of explain the way the yeah. company thinks about it. Yeah. Um, really, I guess I've sort of a, humor me for one more minute on the, on the technology pipeline side, because again, with, with all these different teams working on totally different sports, but building off of the same core uh, frostbite technology, how, how does that sort of technology sh pipeline sharing work with that? Like in the sense of, does everyone add on to it like if the 
FIFA team makes a cool animation system? Can the Madden team grab it, or or uh, or is it more of just a? Do you end up with these just pretty individualized little branches off of the same core tech? Yeah, so we have a, we have a large central Frostbite team, and and Ken Moss, our CTO, um, is responsible for that for that group. And, yeah. And and I mean that's hundreds of developers, and they are in Sweden and in Vancouver and in Orlando and many other locations. Um, and what they do is they invest in that core engine, and then what happens is they have various releases of that engine. And so as a team goes through their cycle, um, they agree to which which um, version of Frostbite they're going to integrate with and launch on. Yeah. And so they work with the Frostbite team to integrate the latest version as it comes uh, throughout each year. Um, and then at a certain point in their schedule, they pick the moment where they say, okay, this is the version we're going to ship on. So we're not it, taking yeah. any more integrations from this point forward. And then they take the game, take it to the finish, launch it at Polish. Um, and then whatever didn't make it in, they then back integrate those changes into Frostbite afterwards. And so then that central team is constantly bringing in those integrations of, of new tech and features from all the teams into the latest central version of Frostbite. And then it's going out to the various teams that are using it as they take new integrations of the latest version of Frostbite. Interesting. I'm so it goes back and stuff. forth. And it's, yeah. It's uh, it's very tightly organized and managed, and, and there's always challenges with this sort of model, model but um, there are immense benefits um, to what our teams can do, where they can benefit from the innovation that happens across the company. Right, and you don't have to pay anybody else for anybody else's engine. Yes, that's, that's true. <laughs> that's true that as well. That helps too. Yes.